Hi everyone, a &P Adventures here. I'm Aaron. And I'm Patrick. And we're so happy you're with us at South Street Seaport. Uh, it is a beautiful April day, April 2023. Yeah. It is 14 degrees Celsius. It is 53 degrees Fahrenheit. The sun is out. The blue skies are out. The beautiful New York buildings are out. And we're out and about with you all. So um, we're excited. This is a gorgeous day. So I think we'll get some nice shots. All right, let's go. Yeah. This area of town, I mean, it's it's kind of a hidden gem that a lot of tourists don't fully know about. Uh, it's in, lo in lower Manhattan. We're along the East River. We're just south of the Brooklyn Bridge. It was landmarked in 1977, and it is filled with these 19th century buildings, cobblestone streets. It really feels like taking a step back in time. A bit of a tourist area, but New Yorkers also really love this area because there's so many great cafes and restaurants and um, some concert venues down here as well. So we'll chat about the, the rise and the fall of South Street Seaport. So originally, this area was one of the great commerce hubs of New York City. It had um, easy access to the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, it's on a very safe bay. So the Empress of China was a wooden ship in 1784. It was the first wooden ship to sail to China. It sailed from here uh, to China and came back a year later with a major bounty. And this, they did the same thing a year later. And that really kind of sealed the deal, making New York City a major hub with that sort of um, reliable schedule, essentially. And then this area really started to grow fast. We saw bigger ocean liners coming here in 1818. The very first ocean liner, Black Ball Liner, uh, came here. It was between New York City and Liverpool. And um, it had four ships making uh, New York City this reliable port in the U.S. with a predictable schedule. By 1825, uh, there was an even bigger boost in shipping uh, in this area because of the creation of the Erie Canal, and that connected the Hudson River, which is on the other side of Manhattan, just around the tip down here, uh, up to the Great Lakes. Now, you should note, as we walk around this area, this was not land when the Dutch settled New York in the early 1600s. This was all water. Uh, by 1815, this new land had all been created through landfill. Now, we're standing directly in front of the South Street Seaport Museum. In uh, 1967, the Friends of the South Street Seaport uh, named this area the South Street Seaport. They came up with that organization. They kind of named the area the South Street Seaport. And um, it really came from an idea in the mid-1900s when a lot of cities were sort of taking back their harbors. So think of Baltimore and Boston. And the Friends of the South Street Seaport and the South Street Seaport Museum have really helped to kind of restore and preserve this area. They were inspired or, or moved by what had happened with the old Pennsylvania Station, which was torn down. And they did not want the same thing to happen here in the South Street Seaport area. And so they worked hard to get this area landmarked, which they successfully did, as I said, in 1977. And um, the museum has a lot of exhibits about old maritime New York. It has maritime antiques. And it involves quite a few buildings in this area, as well as um, a couple ships that we're going to see later on in our tour. Patrick, what, is there anything in particular <coughs> that you love about South Street Seaport? Of course, I ask you that question just <laughs> as just you start really coughing. Coughing fit. Um, yeah. Oh, gosh. I love um, that all of the concerts and events that they have down here at the holidays and um, this area in particular, this plaza, um, oftentimes uh, they'll have pop up concerts or um, shows or singing events. But um, yeah. Yeah. It's a cool area. Yeah. I love it. A fun um, part of town. Absolutely. Oftentimes at the holidays, too, um, this area in particular, this plaza, like I said, they'll have concert Christmas concerts or um you know, lots of, they have a huge Christmas tree lighting that they do down here at the holidays. It's a really neat part of town. And I, um, you know, I feel like it's under, under looked. Yeah. <laughs> you know, people want to hit the, yeah, <laughs> underappreciated. People want to hit the, the heavy hitting sites in Manhattan. They want to go to the Empire State Building and, and the Brooklyn Bridge and all of the, the bigger sites. But the South Street Seaport is charming. And um, if you find yourself with an extra day, you don't have plans, come down to the South Street Seaport. It is a really a cool, 
cool area of town. This is the Titanic Memorial Lighthouse. It was uh, established in 1913, and it memorializes the over 1,500 victims of the sinking of the Titanic, April 14, 1912. Now, this would have, would have originally stood on top of a church along the East River, uh, which that church prim primarily served mariners. And uh, at the very top of it, Notice that uh, ball at the top of that tower up there, that's a time ball. So it would drop every day to signal noon to the ships in the harbor. It was op activated by a telegraphic signal from the National Observatory in Washington, D.C. Now that's the same idea as our ball drop on New Year's Eve. That's where that idea comes from, the maritime ball drop. And um, the church ultimately moved in 1968 and the lighthouse was donated to the South Street Seaport Museum and it is indeed under the care of the museum. So here's the plaque uh, right here at the base of the lighthouse that indicates all of that information as well. And just behind this, you'll see Bowne and Company stationers coming into view. Um, quite pleased, there used to be scaffolding in front of it, and it's gone. Yeah, it was up there for a couple of years, the scaffolding. But so the building is uh, shining in its glory today. It really is. Uh, so uh, Robert Bowne established this in 1775, and it's New York City's oldest operating business under the same name. So it was a financial printer throughout the 19th and 20th centuries. And uh, 1975, it partnered with the South, South Street Seaport Museum to open up this 19th century print shop. And if you come down here, definitely go inside and check it out for a couple of reasons. Oftentimes they'll be doing demonstrations with their old antique printing presses. And um, you can oftentimes even ask about it as well. If they're not doing one, sometimes they'll just do it for you when you walk in. But they also have beautiful hand printed stationery and uh, reproductions of vintage New York City posters. Uh, they have printing classes as well. Um, they do have a great website, www.bound.com. Co, C O, bound.co. They uh, sell lots of really cool uh, cards and they do ship, I think, in the United States. So um, check out their website. You can get some, uh, like the cards that Patrick's talking about, you can get like really unique New York gifts. I don't know about you, but when we travel, we like to find a bit of a different kind of souvenir, something other than what you would find in the normal tourist traps. Yeah. And um, Bound would, ha would ha they would absolutely have that. Yeah. So we made our way to Beekman. We're at the corner of Beekman and Water right now. And as I mentioned, this area was is basically all landfill. So you have to know that a lot of these street names are coming about because uh, this is Water Street. So presumably it would have been right along the water um, at one point. And we're going to just kind of pivot around a little bit right here because the light is hitting the New York building so perfectly that we want to show it off. This apartment building right here designed by Frank Gehry in 2011. He also did the Disney Concert Hall in L.A., Museum of Pop in Seattle, Dancing House in Prague, the Guggenheim in Spain. It's just such an impressive building with an architectural style known as deconstructivism, which is quite um, fragmented, disjointed, no harmony or symmetry. But uh, the way the light's hitting it right now, it is definitely musical. It isn't. <laughs> it's strangely, you know, it, there's not supposed to be symmetry in the building, but... It sort of seems there is harmony there with all of those curves along the whole building. It's really, really cool. I neglected to say it's an apart it's an apartment building, by the way. Yeah. So continuing all along right. our our walk, um, this we talked about how this area came to be, the rise of the South Street Seaport, but now we're going to chat about the decline of it. So why is this no longer a major seaport? Well. Uh, by 1825, there was a major boon in shipping this air in this area because of the er creation of the Erie Canal, as we mentioned a little bit ago. And um, around that time, we would have seen um, a lot of filth and poverty and sort of a cesspool of illicit behavior start to come into this area, a bit of a physical de deterioration of the area, in large part because, because of how much it had been used. But we also saw that steamships were the new way to ship by the end of the 1800s, and this port just was not cut out for it. It was better designed for older, or smaller wooden ships. Plus, we also had the growth of the railroad, so things were getting uh, uh, transported via the railroad. And the area started to kind of lose its vitality. 1883, the Brooklyn Bridge opened, which we'll be seeing a little bit, and that kind of changed the way people moved around. Boats weren't as relevant for the boroughs. 
And by 1907, the piers on the west side of Manhattan, keep in mind we're on the east side, but the piers on the west side of Manhattan in the Hudson were bigger and better and they could accommodate bigger ships. By the 1930s, we had almost an, a total ab abandonment of shipping in this area. And, um, and we soon had to compete with the interstate system as well, container ships and vessels. So the last shipping line here was the Ward Line in 1959. It was the last ship here. So we're going to pause here uh, at the corner of basically Water Street and Peck Slip to show off 251 Water Street. This building was built in 1888 originally as a tenement building. And it had a store on the first floor, which it still does. The Hideaway Seaport Restaurant and Bar is what's there now. And um, at the time, it was cost twelve thousand dollars. Now, uh, a one bedroom rents for about four grand in this Ooh building. Wee. Yeah, it was designed by Carl Eisenbach or John Itell. That is a chunk of change. I just want to come in close on these um, the detail of this masonry work. That is the, exactly the type of stonework we would not see if a new building was going up today. I just love that they've preserved this old building. It's just a stunning, stunning building. I love it. So again, we are right along the East River. Um, we'll be seeing great views of the East River in just a little bit. We're going to make our way over there. Also, some tr we'll see the Brooklyn Bridge a couple times on this tour. Oh, I also just wanted to point out, you may have noticed um, some construction that was going on uh, to our left as we were walking. There's a brand new uh, residential building that's going up. So hopefully that won't um, interrupt any nice views for people here in this part of town, but that's what's happening there. Um, gosh, look at this block. It's like literally taking a step back in time. Oh yeah. <laughs> Mark Joseph Steakhouse along here. Um, but there's a, a, a couple buildings down here further uh, along that we do want to chat about. And um, one of them is, I'm not sure if I want to say the name of it because it kind of gives away part of the story. <laughs> well, maybe I will. It's called the Rat House. It's at 273 Water Street. So it was built in 1773. One of the oldest buildings still standing, not only in this area, but in all of Manhattan. And uh, it was a family home for Captain Joseph Rose, who was in the shipping industry in the nearby wharves. By the end of the century, he and his family had ultimately moved. Again, as we said, this area had become quite seedy, so it was not as desirable to live here. And um, really, by the mid-1800s, it was quite run down. And the Joseph Rose House, which now you're seeing coming into view, was turned into a bar and a dance hall. Now, notoriously, it featured dog and rat fights in the basement. So rats were collected from nearby piers, and patrons could place bets on which dog could kill the most rats First, Oof. which is um, a terrible thought and a terrible story. But out of that terrible story is a, a good story. So 1870, Henry Berg successfully campaigned to have the rat pit shut down. And he went on to found the ASPCA, or the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. And now this is a, a luxury apartment building selling for as much as $2 million. I'll take two. Please. Yes, <laughs> they're small. Yeah, exactly. We're seeing just the, here, the very entrance to the Brooklyn Bridge right here. That's what you're seeing ahead of us. Uh, where would you like to go next? You want to do the garden? Yeah, let's show the, the garden off. Okay. So this is the Fish Bridge Park Garden that you're seeing coming into view right here. Uh, it's a community garden. It's named for its proximity to the fish market and the Brooklyn Bridge, thus Fish Bridge. So this was originally kind of a garbage dump and a bit of a parking lot. Um, Patrick's going to get gonna a little sneaky. Do a little bit of maneuvering. There we go. Get our camera through the fence. Um, but it was a, a garbage dump in a parking lot, and community members pleaded with the city to clean it up and fence it in. And eventually the city did that. They prepped it to sell in 1990, but it sat empty still for some time. So before selling, community members kind of volunteered. They cleaned it up. They put it in this community garden, a little bit of a playground, and a bit of a dog run further up. And believe it or not, the city slapped them with a $6,000 bill for rent for the past six months. But there was an extensive lobbying campaign, quite a bit of positive press for the garden. And so the city decided to adopt the garden into its Green Thumb Community Garden Program, which involves over 600 community urban gardens providing free space material and assistance to those gardeners and those who want to enjoy it. But um, I love that. I love the 
the city slapped him with the, the rent and people rose up and said, no. Absolutely. I love that just proves the, the shows the tenacity of New Yorkers. I love that. Now, this red building you're seeing right here on the corner, this is the Bridge Cafe, 279 Water Street. Dates back to 1794. It has housed pubs and taverns and brothels and bars over the years. Uh, some say it was the oldest operating tavern in Manhattan, although it is sadly now shut down in large part because of Hurricane Sandy, which was in 2012. That really, Hurricane Sandy really kind of did a number on this area and, and messed up a lot of buildings. But um, it, this story, this building still has some terrific stories. In the 1850s, it was called Hole in the Wall. And it was owned by a guy named One-Armed Charlie Monell. And he had two uh, glamorous lady bouncers, Kate Flannery and Gallus Mag. Mag, by the way, six feet, two inches tall, pistol in her waist, clubbed her side, filed her teeth down. I mean, she was a doozy. Yeah. And uh, but yeah. she always had a song in her heart. She's so kidding. sweet soul at the same time. Yeah. But she had these filed teeth. And what, what, what would happen is if men were fighting in the bar, she would tear their ears off and keep them in formaldehyde oh behind the bar. A bit of a warning. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. Don't stay in line. Yeah. I mean, um, you. I'm trying to come up with an ear pun and I couldn't, I couldn't come <laughs> up with one. There's got to be a good one there. Um, anyway, they... They clearly can't hear her now. Uh, no, that was bad. That was terrible. Um, but like I said, that was uh, that, that building hasn't fully bounced back yet, sadly. We're at the corner of Front and Dover. This is um, Seahorse, uh, Cowgirl Seahorse right here. Some of you might know of the Cowgirl uh, Saloon and restaurant on, in the West Village. This is their sister restaurant which is a, um, a more of a seafood themed restaurant. And uh, You might be wondering what this uh, outdoor seating is this is um a lot of the restaurants in new york were given permission to set up extra seating out on the street um so that people felt safe to come back to restaurants and eat um so that's what these are you'll see these all over new york um we often see these on our tours we people wonder what they are but uh that's yeah that's just a little outdoor extra seating for the restaurant some are very very fancy some are well. fancy yeah they put little chandeliers and plants and make them nice cozy heaters, nice cozy. Or, heaters or, in the winter yeah yeah uh and those who knows whenever you come to visit new york those um could be gone actually yeah we're, we're not sure what the, the fate of those are in the in the future but we're now to um some uh, public art there yeah. <laughs> really cool <laughs> We're basically at South Street now, which is where the name South Street Seaport comes from. We're going to cross underneath the FDR, the Franklin Delano Roosevelt uh, roadway that's above us, this purple steel structure. And we got the light. Let's go. Yay. Yeah, this is the FDR. It runs all the way up the uh, east side of Manhattan. So that's what we're yeah. seeing. They have at least tried to make it look nice with a painting in a nice color. Because honestly, it's a little bit of an eyesore. You know the highway uh going all the way up but uh yeah that's what that is and um we're crossing under here to go over to the east river this will be our first glimpse of the river and the brooklyn bridge uh again it's april it's 2023 and uh, it's a beautiful beautiful day so the views are going to be really quite stunning and yeah, um, it's spring you can see things just starting to come to life all of these trees and shrubs are just starting to uh green up which is nice. So here comes our first view of the bridge. There she is. This iconic, iconic uh, masterpiece, we'll say, the Brooklyn Bridge. It was uh, completed in 1883 after 14 years of construction. It was designed by German immigrant John Roebling. I uh, was sadly killed in a freak accident while surveying the area to begin construction. So his son, Washington, took over. Washington suffered a crippling injury, injury before completing the project. So Washington's wife, Emily, took over and she supervised from their apartment with him supervising from their apartment window. She supervised the uh, rest of the project. And um, she was the first ever female chief civil engineer of a major construction project in America. And that would have been 50 years prior uh, to women, women being able to vote. Gosh, it's crazy. Um, I just want to point out, because this is a great shot, you can see 
uh, the Brooklyn Bridge right here in the foreground, and then the Manhattan Bridge is the next bridge, and then just under the Manhattan Bridge, you can see in the distance, is the Williamsburg Bridge. It's sort of right in the center of your screen. Uh, under the Manhattan Bridge, you can see that the tower for the Williamsburg. So these three bridges uh, right in a row here are the Brooklyn, Manhattan, and Williamsburg Bridge. Of course, uh, spelling out BMW, and that's how uh, most of us remember the names of these three bridges. Now this is the East River you're seeing, so the Brooklyn Bridge right here in the foreground would take you right into the heart of downtown Brooklyn with uh, Brooklyn Heights to the right and Dumbo to the left. Dumbo meaning down under the Manhattan Bridge overpass. Yeah, that's downtown Brooklyn right there and of course Brooklyn Heights. All right. So that's not our last view of the river or the bridge. We'll yeah. have another great shot of that uh, at the near the end of the tour. But we're going to make our way back into the uh, South Street Seaport yeah. and, um, and show off a couple more buildings as we uh, twist and wind around. This way? Uh, uh, we can go north. This way around. Yeah. Yeah. Like right, yeah. yeah. And um, as we cross the street here, I want you to take notice of this building across the street. I know you're looking at it and you're probably thinking, that's boring. Why am yeah. I, I don't <laughs> want to look at that boring building. Um, but it's for a very good reason. Sorry, we're crossing a bike path. Just have to make sure that we're not in any biker's way. And now yeah. we're crossing a, a car path, also well, known as a road. Yeah, they're bigger than us, so we want to let this guy pass. Okay, now we can cross over. Yeah. So this building is uh, for Con Ed or Con Edison. They're our electric company, our power company here in New York City. And um, it'll again, it'll make a lot more sense uh, why we want to want you to take note of that in just a minute. But as we make our way to the corner of this building that you see the fire escapes there that's known as the jasper ward house and jasper ward was a real estate developer and what he did was he bought up land around the ship slips that's the plot of water between piers where boats dock and the idea was that he had hopes of filling in that water with landfill in order to build which he did he got city approval he filled it in he waited five years for the land to settle and uh, so he ultimately erected, between 1807 and 1808, numbers 41, 43, and 45 peck slip. Now all that remains is 45 peck slip, which is what you're seeing right here. You'll see Jasper Ward House painted on some of the brick as well. So keep in mind where we're standing, this would have been underwater. Uh, 41 and 43, again, they were demolished years ago. But in 1973, Con Edison or Con Ed, our power company, they uh, decide they were going to demolish the final building in order to construct a giant substation. And there was a big outcry. They ultimately changed their minds and they built around the Jasper Ward House and they donated the Jasper Ward House to the South Street Seaport Museum. And on this side of that building, so the other side we were showing, that boring side there, they did decide to sort of cover up this area with this terrific mural. So what you are seeing is not um, uh, a building. A building, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is a building, but it is a painted on with many buildings, I guess. I don't know how to describe it exactly. Yeah, it looks like than... a very 3D, uh, those windows are all painted on. This is a mural on the side of this uh, brick building. So this mural uh, was commissioned by Con Ed, and it was, the idea is to kind of neutralize the substation and make it blend into the surroundings. So they did this in 1977. It's by Richard Haas, H-H-A-A-S. Um, I'm from the St. Louis area. He also did, for those of you that might know, uh, the Edison Brothers stores right off of I-40 in St. Louis. <laughs> he did that mural there as well. It's remarkable 3D. I mean, it looks like a building. It right looks there. like a building, yeah. It's just unbelievable. Really cool. He even built, I'm um, just pointing out over here on the side, the side of this building, they've added those windows there of that little brick uh, building that sticks out. Those are <laughs> those are painted on windows. And even that door there, uh, that doorway is uh, um, painted on as well into the side with steps going up. I love it. Yeah, don't try to go in that doorway. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be a... Uh, also yeah. want to point out, um, you might be noticing the city bike, these blue bikes. Um, this is New York City's um, bike system, and you can rent these bikes for, oh, 30 or 45 minutes and return them to any other docking station. They, these docking stations are all over the city, and uh, you can rent these for 30, 40 minutes and 
return them anywhere else. They're, it's kind of a neat, neat system. That, of course, again, is the FDR Drive, like we said, goes up the, um, the east side of Manhattan. And uh, so we're going to cross this uh, plaza right here, which I think is called the Fishkill Plaza. And now my, my um, brain is escaping me. Nope, it's called Pexlip. Pexlip, it's called the Pexlip that's Plaza. right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but we want to point out this um, this corner building right here, which has the Paris Cafe. Uh, it fortunately has rebounded since Hurricane Sandy in 2012, but it was another one that was hit quite hard uh, because of Hurricane Sandy. In fact, it was under 11 feet of water. But it was established in 1873, one of the oldest bars in New York City. One of the most uh, famous frequent visitors of the Paris Cafe was None other, none other than Teddy Roosevelt, of course, who became president of the United States. But at the time, he was our New York City police commissioner. Again, you can see a Paris Cafe. Really cool. Right there. They have a little Eiffel Tower light fixture there. I love that little detail. <laughs> now, one thing we haven't chatted about too much while we've been walking around here is the fish market. We've mentioned it a couple of times. And if you know this area well already, you know that it is um, really known for the fish market that was here for a long time. You can see these awnings up ahead of us. Uh, this would have been like directly into the loading bay for the fish market. Uh, there were quite a few. It wasn't just this one. Uh, now it's the fish market restaurant, as you can see. But in the 1820s, what we saw was several fish dealers starting to set up along this area. 1869, a prominent building was erected for the fish business. And um, by the 19th century, with refrigeration technology and express railroads firmly in place, the Fulton Fish Market would become the largest in the country. I'm going to pause on that story to point out Defara's Pizza right here. Uh, it's actually a Brooklyn-based pizza place, one of the best in the city. Oh, but yeah. if you don't want to uh, journey out to their Brooklyn location, they have a little satellite location right there. But um, this, that fish market was really integral, an integral part of the working East River waterfront. It really helped make New York City this kind of powerhouse mercantile center. Now, ultimately, the market relocated in 2005 to a larger facility in the Bronx. Hi! Someone talking <laughs> at us. They love A&P Adventures. It's, <laughs> oh it is, um, it's great. Um, ultimately, it relocated 2005 to uh, the Bronx, to a larger facility there. Now, it moved partially because we saw in the uh, in the eighties they built a mall out on Pier Seventeen, and that's where we're going to be ending our tour today in just a little bit out on that pier. But the mall was built to bring tourists into this area, but um, well, it was a little bit smelly with the the, the fish here, so there yeah. was a <laughs> uh, a conflict of interest a little bit. Um, but also, it just was easier. They could have more space up in the Bronx. They could have, the transportation was much easier uh, because the fish weren't coming in through the port anymore uh, because the port was no longer used as right. much. They were coming in via trucks. Yeah, if you, uh, if you know New York City and you know the South Street Seaport from decades ago, it is very different. Uh, when I first moved to New York, the fish, uh, the South Street Seaport area smelled very different than it does today. Um, you know, it smelled very much of fish and fresh fish. So, um, yeah, you sort of had to take the good with the bad or the bad with the good then. But now it is um, revitalized and a really cool area, especially this street. Yeah. So where we're at right now is you can see Cannon's Walk right there on that building. And um, it's named for John Cannon, who is from Staten Island, owned a shipping business. Now this, there would have been a wharf right here as well, that similar to Jasper Ward, who we were talking about earlier, um, he, he also filled in his slips to build this. Uh, 1790 is when he filled them in. Uh, we're on Front Street, by the way. So Again, you have to think about these names. Water Street probably would have been on the water. Uh, and then as they filled it in, then we had Front Street, which would have <laughs> been on the front of the water. And then as they build that in, filled that in, South Street, which was the southernmost street then because these, um, you know, streets were getting, basically we were building more and more land as we came along here. So much simpler then. <laughs> We're by the water. What should we call the street? Well, we'll call it Water Street. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Whatever, you know, 
This is the, the, the front end. What should we call it? Well, Front Street, I guess. You know, simpler times. Maybe it was really um, just a really nice street, and Mae West named it, and she said, what a street, <laughs> and somebody misinterpreted mis uh, her. That is, that, I, I suppose that's possible, they called Aaron. It I don't know. Water Street. <laughs> uh, so we're going to come back to these buildings in just a second, but we want to point out um, the Cannons Walk. We're yeah. going to kind of head back and show you that little area, So, um, which you'll see underneath this awning. Uh, there's two entrances for it. One is right in... It, the entrance that we saw back there, you might have seen the yellow balls. Um, it's closed for an event today, um, which you'll see as we walk up. The there They have the doors chained. But normally, it is open to the public. And you can come back in here into the secret space. And it's a little courtyard that you're going to see coming into view. And it's nestled between three Greek Revival-style uh, warehouses that were built in the... Um, in the 1830s and it's just this quiet little nook back here and um, like we said it is normally open to the public but there's an event today this is such a cool like window into you know old what I like to say call old New York um, I don't know if this, this will read on this video but this is you know the backside of, of uh, Bound this, and this Company. Bound and Company and this alley back here um, it's like that, the Jungle Cruise at Disney. They're like, now, what is the backside of water? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, we're just seeing the back of the building. But, um, you know, I don't know if you can tell, but those old shutters up there, you know, it's a little, you have to imagine this 100 years ago and, you know, what this was like. Um, I love to think about, you know, what life was like a century ago back here. So backtracking just a little bit, we're going to show off Skirmerhorn Row. Uh, which you've already seen, but we didn't really talk about it yet. Uh, we, you saw it at the top of the tour, and you saw it just as we were rounding the corner. Uh, but now we're actually going to tell you about these uh, buildings, these brick buildings out here. Now, Skirmerhorn Row was built in 1812 by Peter Skirmerhorn, who's the grandson of John Cannon, who we were just talking about. And it's in the um, federal style. Now, these served as office and storages offices, excuse me, and storages for the nearby piers. And they were ma mainly known as uh, counting houses. And uh, not, uh, not like accounting, but quite literally uh, warehouses where they could, um, you know, sort of count the, um, the goods that were coming in, like a transition between the boats and the warehouses. And they could also inspect here as well. Now, Peter, Peter Skirmhorn, was a wealthy, I, I call him by his first name, Peter. We go, by, <laughs> really, I call him Pete. Well, but, well, yeah. When he was a kid, he went by Petey, but now it's just Oh, Pete. my God. But uh, he was a wealthy New York merchant and a landowner. And uh, he was the granddaughter, uh, his granddaughter, excuse me, married an Astor, William Backhouse Astor. And they had John Jacob Astor. So quite a lineage in that, uh, yeah, in that family. You will see the Skirmhorn name. Peppered throughout the city, by the way, there is a, a subway stop in Brooklyn, the Skirmerhorn subway stop. Um, I also, I neglected to talk about the Fulton Market. Yeah, let's show it now. Yeah, we have a good view of it right here, the Fulton Market building. So this would have been one of the um, main uh, fish markets back in its day. It has gone under a major renovation, as you can see. And now it has a very fancy movie theater uh, with recliners and full menus. And uh, uh, I think there's even much more in there. The Lawn Club, which is a um, croquet and bocce ball. Yeah, they've come a long bar. way. Boy, yeah. oh boy. Sort of like a, a city country club is the Lawn Club that's in there. So we're going to cross South Street again. And this time we're going to go out onto Pier 17. And we're going to get to see a couple of the boats that we talked about that are part of the South Street Seaport museum and you're going to see them start coming into view uh should we do the waiver tree first yeah, yeah we should do the waiver tree oh we got the light too yeah. that's exciting yeah, yeah, yeah uh so the waiver tree you're already probably seeing oh they're filming something oh yeah they're filming something here in new york today here are the trailers always exciting around new york you never what know what it could be that they're filming but you can always look on the light posts nearby and they'll usually have post of what it is uh, that's the that's the good little trick of how to see what they're um, <laughs> what they're filming. But here's the Waver Tree. It's on Pier 16. The Waver Tree was built in 1885 in Southampton, England. 
Now it's named for uh, the Wavertree District in Liverpool. This sailed around the globe four times before it got caught in a storm in Cape Horn. And uh, it was, the storm tore off her mast. It was ultimately salvaged, salvaged as a floating warehouse. And then it became a sand barge in South America. One of the largest commercial sail ships made of wrought iron. And it was made at a time when most ships were not only steel, but also uh, with most of the were not but also they were steamships. So it was interesting that this one was a sailing ship. Currently, the largest iron vessel still afloat. Uh, the South Street Seaport Museum saved it in 1968. They towed it back to be a, the centerpiece of the uh, Street of Ships exhibit, and it is part of the uh, your your ticket to the South Street Seaport yeah. to visit the Waver Tree. Right there. I want to turn around. Oh, yeah. yeah. The tin building. This is exciting because it's uh, recently reopened. So this was built originally in 1907. And, a, and it housed a lot of food vendors. Some of the, sh the uh, fish industry would be in there. And um, it was obliterated by Hurricane Sandy, as we've mentioned a few times. A lot of the buildings in this area were. It was, um, it's, it was disassembled in 2018. And um, they took it to a warehouse, essentially. And uh, basically, they built a brand new building with quite a bit of the original detail and any salvaged bits they could from what they disassembled in 2018. Now it's been recreated 32 feet east of its original location, location and raised six feet in the air uh, so that if there's um, flooding, it's, it's much safer this time around. Again, I love that they saved this building. They literally took it apart and put it back together um, and, and put it back um, in the same location. I just love it so much. Now, it's a bit of a multi-purpose building at this point. So in a nod to its um, original fishmonger days, there's uh, the first and second floor have some seafood shops as well as some restaurants. You'll also see fresh produce, cheese shops. Should we go in? Yeah, let's see, are they open yet? Yeah, they open at 10 a.m. Oh, great, let's I think do we're it. good. I think we could go in and kind of go out the back. Yeah, let's, let's do it. So we'll take you in and we'll just walk through a little bit and see uh, some of what's inside the tent. Yeah, this is a special treat. It's kind of quiet because it's morning time, so presumably the restaurants aren't fully open yet. But um, this just opened, by the way. This is not, uh, let's see, it's not even a year old, actually. Um, and uh, this, again, this first floor is, um, it almost looks like a Whole Foods in a way. Yeah. <laughs> sort of an open supermarket. Uh, but there's also a pastry shop in this area. Oh, yeah. We'll see a candy shop back here in the back. Uh, a little flower shop here in the middle. And we won't go up there, but there's a second floor as well, which has um, a couple restaurants up there as well. And um, a couple of their little shops, too. This is called the Spoiled oh, Parrot. Oh, the Spoiled Parrot. This is a really neat shop. Let's go in here. Yeah. Ooh, Easter candy is on sale, 50% off. <laughs> we should buy something. Look at the giant bunny. Oh, this is from Jacques Torres, the giant bunny, a very popular New York-based chocolatier. Wow. Oh, my gosh. This is like... I feel like we're in Honeydukes in Harry Potter. Yeah. Holy moly. Oh, I want... I'll take one of everything, please. <laughs> so you can see this um, This building has quite a bit. And then you exit the back. You get to see some shots from the original tin building. Oh, they yeah. Have this them, is uh, really cool. Lit up back here. Yeah, they have some of the old vintage pictures um that's a whole uh, collage of pictures of the old fish market and then in the floor they have you can see branded right there the tin building so if you're if you come down to the south street seaport it is a, a a nice place to come get a bite to eat you could even get yourself a picnic and go sit out on the pier and eat out there because we're getting ready to head out there and you'll see how special that view is when we get out there Although I will also tell you, if you are a fan of burgers, there's a burger joint up here that we love that we'll, uh, that we'll point out. But uh, before we uh, get to the burger joint, I want to point out the uh, Ambrose Lightship right here. Yes, 
like a lighthouse, but it's actually a floating ship. <laughs> so this was built in 1907. And this would guide ships from the Atlantic Ocean into the broad mouth of the New York Bay. Now, there's quite a few sandbars in the bay, low visibility. So this ship would meet those ships in and bring them uh, on in. The light still does blink, although it's daytime, so it's a little harder to see now. But this was donated to the museum, the South Street Seaport Museum, by the Coast Guard. So it's part of the uh, museum's exhibit as well. Yeah. Now that burger joint we were talking about oh. is over here on the left, Mr. Dips. They also have dipped cones, dipped ice cream cones that are A, delicious, B, elaborate. And zero calories. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, these uh, Mr. Dips has really terrific burgers. If you're down in this area um, and you like burgers, that's the place for, to go. Check it out. Um, dip on in there, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're back to the East River. We're walking on Pier 17 right now. Now, this is where we mentioned earlier that the uh, mall was originally located that they built in the 80s. Uh, it also had a lot of damage in 2012 from that Hurricane Sandy. So it's had a lot of rebuilding down here. And um, this new building recently opened just a few years ago. And the new building has Mr. Dips, as you saw, but it also has... Uh, broadcast studios, I believe ESPN is yeah, out here. That's right. And uh, some restaurants. It also has a rooftop event space. And that rooftop event space can also, uh, it also has a concert venue up there as well, with some pretty impressive uh, names that are up there. Um, now, Bloomberg was our mayor at the time that this building went up. And his idea was he wanted this development to not only um, attract tourists, but also natives. And I think it's been quite successful. I think so, too. And also, uh, yeah, so here's that entire yeah. building. The uh, t upper floors, you can see it's kind of glass up there. So at night, it's a beautiful view as well. Those, those glass uh, panels kind of light up, and it's really quite stunning and beautiful. Yeah, they've done a nice job. And speaking of beautiful, once you make your way out here, Oh, look at this view. Oh, my gosh. Oh, here's a great shot where you can see all three bridges that we mentioned earlier. So I'll zoom in a little bit. So there's, um, we're seeing, of course, the Brooklyn Bridge right here in the foreground, then followed by the Manhattan Bridge. I don't know. I want to zoom in because you can see there's a subway train going over the Manhattan Bridge right now. Oh, fun. So I'm not sure if you can see that, but that's really cool. And that, of course, takes you right into Williamsburg. Yeah. Uh, well, the, yeah, the Williamsburg Bridge yeah. does. That's the third one. Um, but oh, yeah. sorry. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm mixing. I'm not following the rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Manhattan Bridge uh, takes you right into Dumbo, um, which of course stands for down under the Manhattan Bridge overpass. Um, and um, yeah, so there's those three bridges, BMW right there. That is quite a shot. It really is on this beautiful April 2023 day, uh, 11 degrees. No, 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 14 degrees Celsius, yep, 50s, 53 degrees yeah. Fahrenheit. Or was it 53 or 56? No, oh, 57. It was 57. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We're terrible. But that's what you get. I mean, <laughs> we mix it up all the time. Uh, thank you. Thank you all for joining us on this beautiful day. Yeah, this was a fun walk uh, yeah. through the South Street Seaport. I have to say, again, if you're ever in New York City and you find yourself with some extra time, and looking for something to do, come town to the South Street Seaport. It is such a cool, historic area of New York City that a lot of people, um, you know, don't don't travel to because they're like I said, they're hitting Times Square and and the Empire State Building and all of the big, you know, main sites. But this is a really cool, cool area. If you liked this tour, please subscribe. Please comment. Please uh, like. Yeah. Um, because we appreciate it. And we appreciate you watching. If you're still watching at this point in time, we appreciate you watching this long. <laughs> and um, by the way, I'm Aaron. And I'm Patrick. And we're AMP Adventures. And we're going to leave you with a lovely shot of uh, the Brooklyn Bridge and Brooklyn. There you go. Boy, that is gorgeous. <laughs>